Hi guys, I'm Eileen. So I've done several videos talking about the luxury pieces and even the everyday items I've stopped buying. And today I want to share with you the clothes I no longer buy. And just a little background about me, I used to love shopping for new clothes. I was the kind of person who was quite conscious about wearing the same outfits for different events. It sounds crazy even to me now because after embracing luxury minimalism, I've cut down my clothes shopping by about 95%. I absolutely love a smaller closet though because first of all, it doesn't take me as much time now to dress up, so less decision fatigue for me. I'm also saving a lot of time and money, especially because I don't need a massive walk-in closet just to store the clothes I don't even wear. More importantly, I'm also not creating as much waste. If you look into fast fashion and what goes behind it, you will know what I'm referring to here. So in short, I have less clothes now, but my life has changed so much for the better. And now let's see what are the clothes I no longer buy. First of all, I no longer buy any clothes that will require any kind of tailoring, unless if it's part of the package. So for example, when I bought my Burberry trench coat, the sleeves were too long, but Burberry offered to do the tailoring for free. I was measured then then and it was hassle free. I was okay with that because I bought the coat with the understanding that it would fit me perfectly. To be honest, I think a lot of designer brands offer that service, but the truth is I don't buy a lot of designer clothes. So if I buy a top from Uniqlo or Kors, I can't expect the same level of personal service. So for me to buy something, it just has to fit me perfectly. My mentality is there are a lot of nice clothes out there. So if something doesn't fit me quite right, there will always be something else. It might be different for you, but I see visiting the tailor a chore, which I don't really enjoy doing. Number two, I now try to stay away from clothes with a lot of logo, especially t-shirts or jumpers where the main design element is the logo. Generally, I now prefer my clothes to be a bit more low-key and I don't want to attract too much unwanted attention. In fact, a while ago, a subscriber left me a message on my channel saying she would never wear too much logo because she didn't want to look like a walking billboard. I thought that was quite funny, but I agree. Too much logo can sometimes start to look a bit tacky. Another reason I don't want to buy clothes with logo is because I don't believe it's worth the price markup. So for example, T-shirts are usually made of cotton and the material is usually not very substantial. But for some reason, when there's a logo on it, the price can go up by 10 times. Personally, I'd much rather pay for good material and excellent craftsmanship rather than just the logo. Number three, I now try not to buy too many pieces that will require specialist care. Now, I'm not saying I'll never buy anything that will need dry cleaning or specialist maintenance ever again because a lot of jackets and coats do need dry cleaning. However, I'm now a lot more conscious about the extra costs and the effort I'll have to put in just to maintain the pieces. This is why I now read the care instructions a lot more than before, especially for the pieces that I'll be wearing a lot. I much prefer pieces that can be machine washed or at least hand washed. Now I've come across a lot of fancy designer pieces that can only be strictly dry cleaned. As beautiful as they look, I think going to the dry cleaner every week is a bit too much for my liking and I'll just have to be honest with myself about that. Number four, I've stopped buying uncomfortable clothes. I've said this many times before, but I feel like the older I get, the more I value comfort. So every time I try on new clothes, the first thing I check is, does it feel comfortable? Does my skin like it? If a shirt or a top makes me feel a bit itchy or uncomfortable, it's straight away a no deal for me. This is why I now prefer to buy natural fabric materials such as silk and cashmere because they are very breathable, soft and cozy. 
To be honest, if you just spend a bit more to buy good quality pieces and look after them well, they will last you a long time anyway, so you really don't have to keep buying more. Moving on to number five, and now try not to buy as many special occasion clothes. In the past, if there was a wedding coming up, you bet I'll be shopping for a new dress and maybe even two pairs of shoes. And because these items are kind of strictly for special occasions, I barely had the chance to wear them. So now I try to shop my own closet and put together an outfit with what I already have. So for example, a week ago, we went to a wedding and I was wearing this dress which I had worn several times to different occasions. In the past, this would have bothered me. But now I think as long as you are appropriately dressed for the occasion, that's what matters. Don't worry too much about what other people might think and just have a good time. Number six, I've stopped buying clothes just to match my accessories. Have you ever had a handbag or a pair of shoes that you can't seem to pair with anything in your closet? Well, I used to have a Celine Nano bag in a bright red color. Well, I loved the bag. I just couldn't seem to put together many outfits to go with it. So in the end, I ended up buying a lot of clothes, which I thought would complement the bag. If you have such an item in your collection, I think it really just means this item is not the perfect fit for your collection, your lifestyle, or the way you dress. So for me, anyway, the right thing to do would be to get rid of this item rather than buying more clothes just to try to make it work. After a lot of trials and errors, I now realize neutral colors work the best for me. So with a lot of things I buy now, whether it is bags, shoes, clothes, or accessories, I usually get them in colors like black, white or beige. This way, everything goes with everything and dressing up becomes so much easier and quicker. That brings me to number seven. I tend not to buy clothes in unusual color, aka anything that's outside the neutral color palette. So most likely you'll never see me in a bright purple dress or a jumper in an orange color. In the past, I used to look at clothes as individual entities. So for example, if I was shopping for a blouse, I might think this blouse looks nicer in yellow than black and so I would take the yellow one home. But the thing is, yellow is never my color and I have no idea how to wear it. So it's not surprising I didn't wear a lot of the clothes I bought. Whereas now with everything I buy, I try to picture how the item would fit in my wardrobe and how it would complement everything else I already have. So if you look at my closet, nothing really stands out individually, but for me, it's quite a cohesive wardrobe and it works very well for me. Number eight, I don't buy trendy clothes. I guess you've probably gathered by now, I really don't aspire to buying a lot of clothes or things for that matter. And I'm not someone who chases after the latest fashion trends for my clothes. I just want to have a closet of comfortable clothes which look fairly timeless and will last me decades. Some people might call it boring, but I'm actually really glad I found the dressing styles that I feel comfortable and confident in. So I don't feel the urge to follow any trends or keep up with anyone. Number nine, if I have the slightest bit of hesitation about any clothes, I simply don't buy them. So for example, if a blouse looks lovely and the material is amazing, but I'm not entirely sure about the pricing, cutting or sizing, I'll just move on. I think this has a lot to do with the fact that I've decluttered a lot of clothes in the last few years, many of which were brand new and never worn. To be honest, I still find it really hard to believe that I've wasted so much time and money, so I certainly don't want to repeat my mistake. I mainly shop online now and usually when I open up a parcel and try on the new clothes, it doesn't take me more than 5 minutes to decide if I want to keep them or return them. So it's usually either I love the clothes or they are going back. Number 10, I no longer buy clothes just because they look nice on other people. I think this is a very important one because 
with social media, we are constantly being exposed to new designs, new outfits, and new pieces. And when something looks so good on someone else, it can feel very tempting. To be honest, I think some people just have the perfect body figures anyway, so they look lovely wearing just about anything. Whereas myself, I have quite a pear-shaped figure, so I might not carry a lot of the outfits as well. So instead of buying new clothes blindly, I now try to stay grounded and not get too carried away whenever I see a lovely outfit on Instagram. So those are the clothes I no longer buy. I absolutely love my smaller closet because it is essentially a collection of what I truly enjoy. If you are like the old me and you feel like there's just nothing to wear, even though you have an overflowing wardrobe, it is very likely there are just too many distractions. So try to pare down and be very selective with everything you allow yourself to buy. I think very soon you have a clear picture about your unique dressing styles and what kind of clothes work best for you. At least for me, less is more when it comes to clothing. We are more than halfway into 2021 and so far I've only bought four pieces of clothes and I can tell you it feels so liberating and refreshing to not have to keep buying new clothes constantly. So that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I will see you in my next one. Have a nice day.